We're moving away from the fuel subsidy uh, issues right now. According to the report from the Agora policy, since the 1970s, Nigeria's fiscal profile has been tied to the oil sector. It said despite the high oil prices in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigeria's oil production has been very low. Okay, let you go. Thanks for staying with me. Let us just uh, examine that um, Agora policy for a bit and get uh, some useful insight from that. Now, the policy recommends that government needs to review the security architecture in the oil producing areas and give clear instructions about ending oil theft. How do you react to that? I, I think I think that um, directive is um, it's very important when you think about, for example, the security situation in places like Port Harcourt and the oil, uh, the, the oil producing states. So I think um, the the incoming administration they need to see how they can work with the um, the Nigerian Navy um, to create security architectures with international experts that has, I mean, they, they, that has done something tangible with that particular um, a situation. I'll give an example. Um, I'm not sure how the patrol team or the patrol network works, but then you take a look at the bunker that is happening, you realize that um, it's a collaboration between the locals and some of these foreign nationals that are somehow uh, taking advantage of our, our, our people and the products that we have. And we can use that um, example that we recently experienced with the with a pipeline that the underwater pipeline that we saw the the other time that some company I'm not sure who did that and we, it's been under the Nigerian nose for a very very long time and nothing was done about it for many many years. So I think the security architecture is something the new administration needs to work on, and having a good defense minister is going to be um, a first um, way to go um, on that topic. All right. The report also said that both the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission and the Nigerian uh, National Petroleum um, Corporation uh, Company Limited and then PCL should be given clear oil production and exporting targets and be held accountable when those or uh, when these are not met. How far will this um, particular um, stand go, really? Uh, well, the the targets we're talking about are clear. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be something that we should blow the trumpet for because this should be the um, narrative in the first place. And um, for example, when a government is serious with business, these targets are targets that are actually supposed to be met, especially the fact that um, NNPC is said to be like a private entity at the moment. So it should be a profit-driven entity. And then for whatever um, target that they're meant to have, for example, for export or for um, either creating storage facilities or production and stuff like that. This should be uh, something that if, for example, a lead team for NMPC is created and they cannot meet those targets, they should be removed. Um, for now, and I think Nigeria, we're still at that phase where we did a whole lot of technical collaboration with countries that have done it right. Um, sometimes looking inwards can actually be a problem because we end up seeing people who come out and, and have selfish interests and all they are thinking of doing is getting people who are not qualified to do the job to do the job. So if this current administration would pay a whole lot of attention in getting technical partners with countries or from countries that have done it right, that would be a very good way to go because obviously they want to prove a point and having those targets would be a bit more realistic and, um, uh, and we can achieve what we, are, we, we intend to achieve with NMPC. Okay, let's move away from our oil policy regime and talk about um, the taxation part of the fiscal policy. Uh, they also recommended the broadening the, the tax nets to capture the formal and informal sectors not um, existing in the net already. And my question right now would be, what changes uh, are there to be expected from this? And uh, in the wake of uh, Nigerians complaining about multiple taxation? Well, um, the, the honest truth is that when it comes to taxation, um, I mean, we, we would give it to FIRS. They are doing a great job at the moment, but there's still a whole lot to be done. Um, I, I think I'll lean towards talking about what I would, I would um, expect the incoming administration to pay attention to. And that would be more of tax rebates for manufacturing companies. Mm. Um, you look at the fast-moving consumer goods mm. that you see a whole lot of companies um, import those products into the country instead of setting up factories in Nigeria that would um, improve un um, unemployment um, and uh, employ our people and stuff like that. So you see 
those minor products that we can ma manufacture inwards, we import them. Now, tax rebates is something that if um, we pay a whole lot of attention and create a proper, uh, what's it called, blueprint, um, we would increase the number of people who are manufacturing in Nigeria. And then when we have most of those, uh, what's it called, manufacturing companies in our country, we will see that retailers are going to get from them. And it's easier for us to now tax those retailers that are selling to end users uh, in, in a very, some sort of create a very good framework that would work. So multiple taxation, um, when you probably tax um, manufacturing companies and you don't encourage them, it, 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 it moves down to the end user. And at the end of the day, you want to get into a retail store and want to buy something as an end user, and then you're still taxed at the same time. I mean, that contradicts uh, itself somehow. So we need to create a proper framework for this um, to, to remove this multiple taxation, give rebates to manufacturing companies, and increase import duties for people who are importing fast moving consumer goods. All right, uh, fine. Uh, well understood now. But what should the incoming administration be doing about coordinating the nation's uh, monetary policy? And again, of course, uh, the fiscal policy to reduce uh, frictions and counteractive policy goals. Counteractive, let me make an instance that uh, at the beginning of this year, we were faced with the federal government uh, or the CBNs and cash light and, uh, you know, cash policy, cashless policy. At the end of the day, Nigerians uh, bore uh, the brunt for about almost over two months. At the end of the day, uh, it almost looked like a policy somersault. So what should we be doing differently with our monetary policy? Well, um, a reasonable administration will want to put a capable hand in CBN, to be honest, because um, the honest truth is that being a cashless society has a positive impact on the economy somehow. And Because if you look at um, some developed countries, you realize that tracing the movement of cash is a, whole, is, it's a good way to reduce insecurity and then improve on uh, the economy. Of, but the problem is that the CBN has somehow in recent time made... Um, these policies to be like some sort of a show of strength. Um, I mean, CBN doesn't, CBN shouldn't be as popular as it is in the, in the first place. It should just be um, a government entity or independent um, government entity that actually creates policies that work. Um, like an experience with what we had just recently with the whole cashless policy and then changing the old Naira to the new Naira. That will make you understand that at this point, we are very clueless. So the new administration, they just need to make sure they get capable hands and uh, people who have proven experience. And we have a whole lot of um, Nigerians in diaspora that probably work for um, other countries um, and, and they help in shaping the policies of these countries. If you take a look at what is happening, for example, in Morocco or take a look at what is happening in U.S., uh, and some uh, and some states in, uh, or some provinces in Canada and see what Nigerians are doing with financial policies, you realize that we have a whole lot of uh, uh, strong hands that we can bring back home to actually create these reforms that would help our country. Okay, therefore, all of the useful insights that you have brought on the show. Indeed, we need to place uh, our priorities right and uh, put um, the square pegs in square holes to get uh, uh, Nigeria and, of course, the economy working again. Ekene is the CEO of Veslum Limited, uh, and he joined us to talk about uh, the fuel subsidy removal suspension and, of course, the revamping the economy. We do appreciate your time, Kenneth. Thank you very much. All right, and that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin, Academy of Business Insight. We'll turn again next time. Bye for now.